beating Spurs by four goals to two. That, of course, closed the gap on Arsenal at the top of the table. They were supporting Spurs for sure uh, throughout the 90 minutes, but their North London rivals couldn't do them any favours as it's now five points that separate the top two. Arsenal, though, do have that game in hand. Uh, here's how the newspapers uh, summed up that frantic 90 minutes. Uh, Boo Moon rising because City were booed off at half-time. The comeback kings, uh, the times, and Hugo Bosch. Uh, the back page, uh, the Express. Frank Le LeBeouf uh, joins us as well to reflect on quite the game at the Etihad. We'll hear from Frank in a moment. Craig, that was brilliant. <laughs> well, it was a lot of fun. It wasn't a brilliant first 45 for City, and that's why they got booed off. And people may say, well, that's a bit harsh, but the fans are remembering that 45. They're remembering the end of the United game. They're remembering the Southampton game. So there's been a few of these coming. And they were frustrated, and so was the manager, and we'll talk about that. He made... I thought... I mean, I thought he was going to make changes. I thought Phil Foden would sit. I didn't think De Bruyne would sit. Even though I've, I don't think he's been playing great, I didn't think he would sit. I wasn't surprised Bernardo Silva didn't play. But when you looked at the bench, you thought... And the other thing I thought at half-time, Stevie, I thought, right, the cavalry's coming yes. on. Yeah. But he didn't. No. He didn't. He, so he's obviously said, listen, you've got us into this. You get us out of it. And when Alvarez gets that goal, you thought, right, that's it. It's almost kind of the top of the champagne there. Well, it was a different city in the second half because they came out with urgency in the final third and, and they played with emotion. You could see it. You could actually see the emotion watching the game, the difference between the start of the second half and the first. Mm. And Tottenham had no answer for it. You know, a side, a side that's built to defend well and then attack on the break... Well, they didn't defend. The defending was a shambles. But as I said, you've got to give credit to, to, to the City players. Completely different outlook, urgency and emotion. How good was Riyad Mahrez today, Frank? Exceptional, exceptional. But allow me to, to add uh, Nathan Ake as well, uh, especially the second half. It was superb. But yes, offensively, uh, he was involved in the four goals that uh, City scored. He's sharp. Uh, don't forget, he wasn't involved because he's Algerian. He didn't play for the World Cup. And he's, uh, I guess he had a second preparation. He's fit. He's, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's very good uh, right now. He filled the game like we could see in the, in the fourth goal. And, uh, yeah, he's, uh, he makes a difference. He makes a difference on his side. And Davies had a nightmare today. So did Perisic against him. That's why he took him off. Yeah. Mate, in all fairness to him, he's not a fullback. He's a wing-back. He's been turned into a wing-back. He's played there many times, but he's not a natural wing-back. And he got roasted by him. And then Longley comes on. He had a nightmare. His Tottenham career hasn't got going. His Barcelona career hardly got going. And, uh, and yeah, so you could say, in some sense, yeah, 2 nil at half-time, but the Ederson hospital ball. I mean, even if he's going to play that out, Ederson, under pressure to Rodri, he's got to play it to the other side. Right. Plays it to the side that Benton Kerr was on. So, yeah, it looked as if it was going to be different for Tottenham in terms of, oh, this we've been criticising them recently, this is the stepping stone, but they just could not handle that wave of City attack after attack in the second half. Having said that, how critical should we be of Tottenham considering there aren't that many teams, are there, that could cope with City in that mood? I think we have to be critical of Tottenham. 2 nil up at half-time, aside, as I said, that that Conte really has built to defend and then attack. So the, you're given a two-goal lead. You know, it, it, it's weird to me to listen to him complaining about not getting money. You know, at the end of the day, that back, that back line are two players that he brought in. Mm. Langley and Royale. They can't defend. And why do you think Langley was able to go to Spurs? Because Barca didn't want him. They were playing PK, who was about 65 at the time, ahead of him. So why do they <laughs> think they're going to bring in players like him and do any better? And Eric Dyer, for me, I don't think has ever been a particularly great centre-back. I know he plays with England, but again, I don't understand it. So we shouldn't really be surprised, considering I've just basically slaughtered two of the back four. And then you throw in the goalkeeper as well, mm. who, who's good for a, a mistake now and again. But he didn't want it the weekend, and he's doing another one today. So defensively, defensively, you expect them to be better. But then if you go through it, you shouldn't be surprised. We kind of talked about it a bit yesterday when Seb was on his rhetoric recently about the English system 
Yes. And the lack of transparency from others about direction. And you kind of go, OK, that's, they do it differently in other countries, but you've been in England before. And it, it was a big deflection tactic to answer all the questions about his team, about his team's performances, about his team's defending, about his team's style. And maybe a result today would have made that go away, but, I mean, who does he want to answer this one? Mm -hmm. The sporting director? Daniel Levy? As Stevie said, they're 2-0 up. Yeah, what, what do you think he said at half-time? Oh, they're not going to attack us in the first 10 minutes of the second half. They're not going to be angry. They're going to be... <laughs> he had to be saying to them, they're seething in there. Yeah. They're supposed to be in a title race. They're supposed to be the favourites. They're going to come out at us with the biggest hammer and hammer away until the break is down. Well, it wasn't that difficult, was it? Not at all. How, how much are you worried about Hugo Lloris with regards to should he even start this weekend, Frank? That would be a question mark. Even if I think that uh, on that specific uh, goal that he conceded on the, on the near post, you know, Davis uh, uh, touched the ball and deflected. So even though he has to take care of that near post, you know, I think he can be fully guilty for that, for that goal. But that's been many, many mistakes from Hugo. And, um, and even if he's uh, French, you know, he just retired <laughs> from the national team. He has, to be, he has to be punished if he's not good enough and uh, Conte will have to decide. But again, uh, I have to go with Stevie. You know, when you base your, your tactic about defending well without having good defenders, it's getting hard even for the goalkeeper, <laughs> for the entire team, for the fans, but also for the goalkeeper. Because you know at one point, you know, if you're not perfect, you're going to concede goal because you see so many mistakes. So it's not only on uh, Igoloris that you have to, uh, to, uh, to be critical. It's the old defence, the old team, the mentality, the, the wrong mindset. And, of course, the first for me, Gilchi, for that is Mr. Conte. Because he has the players to play differently. Different, uh, yeah, differently. Uh, and he doesn't. Uh, let's talk about Pep Guardiola after the game. You alluded to the fact, I think everyone was expecting him to go, yeah, this is it, this is my Manchester City, great performance second half. But he was scathing of the fans, of the players, saying that everything is just too comfortable, too quiet, there's no guts, there's no passion. This is a shadow of the team that he's coached in the past. And I think he's seen that in the body language recently. He started to talk about body language before the defeat at Manchester United. And I think he could sense, even though some of the results were OK, the performances were uh, a good level or two down on what, what he and what they have set the standard upon. So I think he knows that the chances of this City team putting a 15-game win and run together is probably slim. Mm. That's good news for Arsenal. But, yeah, he's, he's less than happy with what you've seen on the field. You obviously did in the 80s with Liverpool, Stevie, yeah. when you win, just winning titles for fun. Is there a part where it gets a little complacent, that the edge isn't quite there? <clears throat> well, I... I actually, you know, listening to him after the game, yes, he was critical of the players. And, and you know, I, I said earlier that the urgency and the emotion was the difference for City. And that just hasn't been there in the final third. Because I don't think City are playing any different from back to front. It's just the final third, they seem to be lacking that extra bit of drive and guile. But as far as they've criticised, he criticised the fans for being quiet. He's got to understand that when you've won the title four out of five years, the fans are turning up thinking it's going to be three and four. Right. And so do you really expect the fans to be screaming their head off from the get-go when they're coming here before a ball's kicked, they've won the game? It's, it's difficult. You mentioned me in the 80s. I remember sitting in the stand in 83 and Liverpool scored. After about 10 minutes, it was 1-0 and the place shut down. Because we knew the game was over. Right. The fans knew the game was over. So it's OK for him to criticise the fans, but it's not easy for the fans to turn up and be screaming their head off for 90 minutes because they're used to winning. Standards have and dropped. And there's nothing you can do. Standards about. have dropped a bit. He wants to go and manage Everton. <laughs> yes, I, I, mean, I tell you, he wants, to go and, he wants to go and see when fans do turn. Yeah. You know, he has the odd bad performance or they get knocked out of the Champions League and there's a few... He's talking about a few groans. I mean, I don't I'm not condoning, by the way, what's going on at Everton that's beyond the protesting in a normal way. You know, I'm all for protesting in a, in a, in a civil manner, not what we're seeing that's beyond the pale at Everton. 
But that's this, that's when fans really turn. That's a few groans. He's getting he's getting groans and moans about the style of football at the moment. Do you know as far as the players are concerned though? Don't you think that's down to to, to Guardiola? You know, he's talking about the players lacking lacking a bit of fire and lacking a bit of guts and lacking a bit of desire, right? right? So surely that's got to be part of his job to make sure that his players are on edge all the time and they're not getting complacent. That's part of his job. You know, I'm saying that in the final third there seems to be that lack of urgency. Well, guess what? You're the coach. You've got to find you've got to find a way of motivating your players to have that sort of urgency from the kickoff, not to be able to come in at half time and, and take a size twelve up the backside before you before you get that desire and urgency. Surely that's part of his job. You know, he's too busy criticising the players and the fans. He needs to look at what he's doing in order for the players to get back to that urgency and that emotion that they've had for, for the last whatever years he's been there. So he's got to look at himself. Part, part of his job is to make sure his players are on their toes and they're on the edge. But what he has done, I suppose in some sense, he's oh. got a result in the end. Sorry, Frank. He's got a result in the end. This was a big game off the back of the, the, the Manchester Derby defeat. He can say what he wants about whoever needed a rest. De Bruyne was dropped, right? Yep. So, was, so was Bernardo Silva, who has talked about wanting to leave, and maybe that's part of the issue. Uh, Phil Foden's form has been patchy when he's played. So at, at least at least he said to the team tonight, and, he, and Gundogan didn't play at the weekend, by the way, and, and, and we know Grealish should been in and out, at least he said to the dressing room, whether this works or doesn't work, if I can drop him, De Bruyne, yep. I'm dropping Haaland, I'll drop Alvarez as one of the World Cup, I'll drop, uh, Diaz is on the bench, Laporte gets dropped, Kinsella was dropped. At least one thing, he's made players aware that even though, uh, you know, I mentioned those players, the form hasn't been brilliant, this was a huge game for a bounce back. So he wanted a team, absolutely, that he thought he was going to be confident to win this game. And it meant those guys stayed on the bench. So in some way for him, it was a victory tonight in that sense, as well as the three points. Go on, Frank. Uh, yes, two things. I think I think uh, I, I, I would go for the guy with the guys. You know, I think uh, uh, Guardiola is a little bit responsible for for what he gets from the players. You know, he wants them to play so much. And we saw on the second goal when Rodri has to kick the ball away. He tries to get the ball and keep the ball. He doesn't try to, to kick it away to just to, 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 to save him from conceding a, a goal. And uh, on the first goal, Ederson tries to play. So you want the players to play. So they have to take risks and they get sloppy and they get maybe too overconfident and complacent. It's why maybe they, they play like that. But he wants them to play like that way. So he can be a little bit responsible for that. And for the fans, you know, I played for Chelsea in the 90s where uh, the club didn't win anything for 26 years. The atmosphere was crazy. That was crazy. We were there. Craig was there as well. That was different than when you go to Stamford Bridge now because of the amount of, of uh, title that they got. You know, fans getting a little bit, uh, yeah, um, easy because uh, because they don't they, they know and they they want more and they and they, they you have to starve also the, the fans in order for them to to get to get upset if you go to Newcastle fans are crazy in Newcastle yeah because they don't win anything for 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 decades and they want something and they and they and they are behind the team so for the fans you know you shouldn't complain too much it's, be, it's because he's been successful that the fans are like that but they're so open aren't they well, there's that mm. vulnerability there. There's, yeah. you know, there's, there's still, I mean, I suppose that in some sense, with this guy in charge, that might never go away. Mm -hmm. And it might continue to be their Achilles heel at the knockout stages of the Champions League. But when you compare them to Arsenal at the moment, Arsenal play a silky, attractive looking football, but they don't seem as open as Man City. They, still, they, they, they seem able at the moment to have the balance better. So that's something that he's going to have to address for sure. And what does he do next, Stevie, regarding like the likes of Kevin De Bruyne for the next match? Oh, he plays. He'll be back right. in. Right. At some point, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I'm with Craig. I think it's just a little message. You know what? Yes, you're a fantastic player. Yes, we all love you. Yes, this, yes, that. Yeah. But, you know, it has to be better. And, and he thought that he could do that tonight and also win the game. Turns out he did win the game. Not the way he probably hoped. But, yeah, he's, he's hoping that he's sent a message to De Bruyne and everybody else, but he'll be back. Well, that no tells you, he, he was the guy that created the bit of magic for Grealish, for the, which, which looked like it was going to be the winner yep. at Old Trafford. And yet, 
what he's saying is well, that was good, but the other you know eighty odd minutes right. was way beyond the standard that you've set at this football club. So you know that, that is a message for sure. Does this second half performance does this get the momentum going for City in the second half of the season, Frank, or can you still see them stumbling? Uh, you know, we we so many times, you know, at the end of the season, especially in Champions League, you know, uh, uh, Manchester City losing their their talent or, or, or the, the the frame of mind where they are and where they are inv almost invincible. Uh, I still believe that they can catch Arsenal. I'm still wondering uh, if the Gunners can uh, can uh, carry on playing that well and uh, getting the, all the results. I still have uh, yeah question marked about that. Um, and Manchester, you know, on the eight titles that they got the last uh, the last decades, uh, f uh, four of them they were eight points behind, and more, more than that. So they are capable of coming back. I think uh, we shouldn't bury them uh, too early. Uh, uh, Squadula has a fantastic, fantastic squad, and you have two confrontations against uh, the Gunners. After those two games, maybe you can you can maybe have an idea of where, who's going to be the champion for sure. But uh, you still have to give them a chance to uh, to uh, to finish first. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.